Hello, this is Mrs. Solzen. I'm going to be talking about the development of photography and then three photographs that are on the 250. Um, photography really started with the creation of the camera obscura, which was way back from the 17th century. And it's a tool that artists used to actually draw and paint from. It's Latin for dark chamber. And this is a great um, kind of an image where it shows you how the light would come through the lens. It would hit a mirror and then it would go out on this opening and then kind of project. So that first image, you can kind of see this projection and this is upside down, but an artist could have a canvas here. They could then trace that projection and then they can use that to paint. And this is how people believe Vermeer actually created his small paintings, like the woman holding a balance or the girl with the pearl earring. He has all, they're all kind of the same size. So it's believed that he created his paintings using a camera obscura. This kind of just describes what I just said. So by the early 19th century, small portable camera obscuras had become standard equipment for painters as aids to drawing. So photography developed as a way to make the image, that projection. How can we make that a permanent image? And this led to photography is what we know of today. Modern photography came about with the invention of a light sensitive surface that that image could be projected onto. Uh, so this is actually the first photograph. So we know who invented this photograph, but as far as the invention of photography, it's multiple people that kind of led to this creation of photography. This photograph is created by Joseph Nips. Um, he created this and it was, I believe it was an eight hour, yeah, it took eight hours for this image to be exposed. Exposed means the amount of light that is coming on to this piece of metal because they're not using paper at this time, they're exposing images onto metal. That's a really long exposure time. You really can't have someone, I mean, you can, but that'd be torture, have uh, a poor, you know, someone sitting there for that long. So it makes it difficult. Um, many of his early images turned black over time due to continued exposure to light. But this first photograph, the view from window at Gras actually still exists today. So now we're gonna start talking about this photograph called Still Life in Studio. I'm just going to focus on the artist's last name, Daguerre, 1837, and it's a photograph. All right, so Neeps, the guy that makes that first image, he's having um, technical difficulties, you know, re having an image stay on the metal. So he makes Daguerre his partner, and then he dies. So Daguerre continues with the experiments and creates what is now known as the daguerreotype. So Daguerre is really credited um, as creating photography, but there's someone that kind of came before him. Uh, I think of that as similar to cubism because we all credit with Picasso for creating cubism, but he had a friend who they were creating it together side by side, but we all know Picasso. So Daguerre, what he does with the daguerreotype is it does reduce the exposure time. So he doesn't have to, you don't have to have a subject sitting there for eight hours while light is coming into the camera. He created a lasting result because of the invention of a chemical called hypo. It's a chemical that reversed the light sensitivity of paper. And this only produced a single image. So we're going to talk about how does photography blur the lines between art and technology. And this is an argument that I've had in my house with my husband. So since the invention of photography, arguments have persisted over whether photography is considered an art or is it a form of technology? If it's something that everybody can do, is it really an art form? Photographers have fought for decades to have their work accepted as products of artistic expression. It happens now. My husband doesn't believe that photography is an art form because, you know, grandma can take photographs. Everybody can take photographs. Do you really need artistic talent to take a photograph or are you just using technology? And this argument that we're having today started with the invention of photography. It's not something new. So Daguerre promoted photography for scientific purposes and as a medium for artistic expression. That is the, the reason the photograph, this particular photograph, looks the way it does. So artists responded in different ways. A lot of artists used it. Some names that you might recognize, Delacroix, uh, Courbet, Degas, Ong, Vermeer, they all used photography as an aid to painting and drawing and helped them see. I use photography for my own artwork. And then others were threatened by it. They refused to consider it as an art. 
Ooh, that was nice. Okay, overall the form, this is inspired by his form of the still life that he's photographing is inspired by Dutch still life paintings. So College Board says that Daguerre created his daguerreotype still life in studio when photography was still a very new medium by referencing classical motifs in his still like arrangement daguerre implied the potential for the new medium of photography to soon be on a level plane with other media such as painting or sculpture this also was influenced by 17th century dutch vanitas painting such as the work by rachel roish which i'm showing you on the right here a characteristic of these still life paintings is compositions created from carefully chosen and equally carefully observed objects. So that is the influence there. All right, moving on to Moybridge, The Horse in Motion by Moybridge, 1878 uh, photograph. It's about nine by 12, if you want to know the size of it. All right, here's your question. When a horse trots or gallops, does it ever become fully airborne? Are you picturing this in your mind? What do you think? Is it ever in the air or is there always a leg, a foot touching the ground? What do you think? So that is the function of this artwork. This was designed to settle the question of whether a horse ever takes all four legs completely off the ground during a gallop. So the story behind that, of course, there's going to be a story. Here's a lot of context here. So the railroad tycoon and former California governor was convinced the answer was yes, and he commissioned Moybridge to provide the proof. Moybridge developed a way to take photos with an exposure lasting a fraction of a second and with reporters as witnesses arranged 12 cameras along a track on the tycoon's estate. As a horse sped by, it tripped the wires connected to the cameras, which took 12 photos in rapid succession. Moybridge developed the images on site and revealed the answer as yes. The revelation which the naked eye cannot see, but is apparent through photography, marked a new purpose for the medium. It could capture truth through technology. So I consider that the, the meaning behind this piece, the content. Um, so again, think about blurring the lines between art and technology, that technology is becoming the art form, right? Yep, I just said that. All right, so 1851, this method was introduced, allowing for an even shorter exposure time. Remember when photography just first started, it was an eight hour long exposure time. Now we're talking three to five minutes, as well as creating a very clear image. Um, and then this exposure time, well, taking the photograph was you know, instantaneous. 1867, a dry glass plate was invented, reducing the inconvenience of the wet method. Prepared glass plates could be purchased. And then new advances keep um, coming out. So this is what, in 1878, this new advanced technology decreased the exposure time to 1 25th of a second, right, in order to capture this horse in motion. So this new development is celebrated here in Moybridge's sequence of photographs called Galloping Horse. And he has a series of these types of artwork, which all could also relate to, you know, early animation. all capturing movement. So photographers in the 19th century were pioneers in this new artistic endeavor, blurring the lines between art and technology. Um, and then Moybridge is known for creating these portfolios of photographs to measure human and animal motion. And he recorded stages of movement that's too rapid for the human eye to observe. Last photo we're gonna talk about is called the steerage by Stieglitz, Stieglitz, Alfred Stieglitz, 1907, and it's a photograph. So context form, the funky, funky cha-cha. So some context, Stieglitz worked to make photography accepted as an art form. Remember, there were a lot of critics that were against it. So he led a movement that's called pictorialism, pictorialism, where artists made photos to resemble paintings, right, to create a higher art form. So here's some examples of his pictorialism photographs. 
He would shoot in mist or snow to create a mood, to create marks with photographs resembling brushstrokes. Um, in this photograph, the steerage, he's already abandoned that idea that photographs should look like paintings. But his artwork is all about photography as an art form. So we'll talk more about that as we move on here. Here's another example. Khan Academy gave this as pictorialist on the left by Alfred Steiglitz and then his more modernist approach to photography where he's emphasizing on the formal qualities, shape, line, texture, contrast. All right, so he was on a ship traveling from New York to Europe and he was very uncomfortable among the first class peers. So he started wandering around and while he's wandering, he caught this view from the upper deck looking down into the steerage. So steerage is part of the ship holding people of lower class. It's very Titanic-esque. Um, so he did not have his camera with him as he's walking around. So he actually went back to his room, got his camera, came back, hoping that everybody was going to be right there. And they were. So he had described what he saw at the moment. So I got this from Khan Academy. He says, a round straw hat, the funnel leading out, the stairway leaning right, the white drawbridge with its railings made of circular chains, white suspenders crossing on the back of a man in the steerage below, round shapes of iron machinery, a mast cutting into the sky, making a triangular shape. I stood spellbound for a while, looking and looking. Could I photograph what I felt, looking and looking and still looking? I saw shapes related to each other. I saw a picture of shapes and underlying that the feeling I had about life. So that to me goes back to this argument that I have with my husband about it. Can photog is photography an art form or is it technology? And I believe it's art. Anybody can take a photograph, but an artist is going to see shapes and line and texture and contrast and color and know how to create a composition, right? He stood there looking at this thinking, this is an artwork. I have to photograph this. And he went back and got his camera for this. So what he's describing are the elements of art, right? If you take an art class, you focus on line, shape, form, value, space, color, texture. Those are the elements of art. So that's what he's showing us in a photograph. So the artist emphasizes formal aspects of the photograph, not the subject matter. I mean, the subject matter is there, the content, but this is really about the formal qualities of art, of a photograph. So he's embracing the beauty of a photograph. He believed the camera was to be used to document the modern world, right? A lot, just kind of like realism, the painting movement realism. Um, the content also represents the fast pace of the modern world, people coming together, different classes, movement, immigration. And then the function of this as an art piece, it's heightening photography to a higher art status by saying the form and the composition were essential elements in the photograph. That guy with the white hat had to be there, right, for this to be the photograph that it is. And then what I love about this is this is Vic Muniz who recreates artworks, famous works of art, out of non-traditional art making materials, like maybe trash. This is chocolate syrup he's recreating or appropriating an artwork in. Um, also, I just want to bring up, so a lot of people, when they think of art history, and they think of married couples, we typically think of Frida and Diego, right? So Frida has the painting on the right that we look at in this class, and Diego has the painting on the bottom that we're going to look at in this class. But no one really talks about Alfred, Alfred Steiglitz being married to Georgia O'Keeffe, and she is not one of the artists on our 250, which is a shame because she should be. All right, overall, we should be able to write an essay or have a discussion about how do these photographs blur the lines between art and technology? How are these uh, photographs being used to help promote photography as a form of fine art?